what happens in patients with inflammatory arthritis. Recently, research has shown that two of the most frequent inflammatory arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis, are linked to certain bacteria from patients' gut. It was shown that there is a link between certain bacteria, like Porphyromonas gingivalis, from the oral mucosa and the onset of rheumatoid arthritis. These patients suffer from periodontal disease many years before they develop rheumatoid arthritis. Also, the gut microbiome is altered in early rheumatoid arthritis, and there is a preponderance for more Prevotella species, which increase the risk to develop this disease, and it was also associated with more severe cases. As we discussed, the microbiome is separated by the gut lining by a layer of mucus. When this mucus is destroyed or under certain situations when bacteria start releasing chemicals, the gut lining is compromised and it creates inflammation. In 1980, it was demonstrated for the first time that patients with ankylosing spondylitis have multiple lesions in their gut mucosa. Now we know that two thirds of those patients with ankylosing spondylitis have clinical evidence of chronic intestinal inflammation. In addition, there is a form of ankylosing spondylitis in patients that develop Crohn's disease. About 10% of those patients with inflammatory bowel disease, they develop a form of ankylosing spondylitis. Furthermore, the composition of the gut microbe differs in patients with ankylosing spondylitis from patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and it's also different from healthy individuals. People that are healthy, but they have an HLA-B27 positive, which will increase the risk to develop ankylosing spondylitis, had a different gut microbiome pattern compared to people that were HLA-B27 negative. And I would like to make a short reference to a bacteria that is found in patients with active ankylosing spondylitis. It is called Ruminococcus gravus. This bacteria was also linked to Crohn's disease. And we know this bacteria has the power to eat the, to eat the mucus layer and actually break down the gut wall. And after the gut wall integrity is affected, there will be a microbial invasion and there will be metabolites produced by bacteria that will go in the people's blood and will create more inflammation. What can be done to achieve a balance between our immune system and the gut microbe? The gut microbe experts agree the best way to cultivate proper balance of gut bacteria is through food, managing stress, regular exercise, and good sleep. Thank you for watching.